What are realistic baby steps we can take to getting closer to God when you feel terrible about your spirituality, effort, and your relationship to God? One of the important things that um, I think many of us underplay is how much individuals can impact how we feel about ourselves and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are, as a child, were constantly hit to read the Qur'an, um, or maybe you had a teacher who spiritually abused you in some way, and Dr. Rania is the expert on this, may Allah bless her. When you have a relationship with Islam that started with parents who used hellfire to threaten you to get you to go to bed on time, like when Islam has been used in these ways, which is not from the revelation, it's not from the sunnah, to teach Islam in these very literally painful ways, a lot of times as an adult, you can have an aversion, may Allah protect us, to prayer, to du'a, to Qur'an. And I've, I've encountered so many people who ask me this, like how do they process wanting a relationship when the beginning of the relationship started with a very painful experience? And the first thing to recognize is the fact that you want a relationship speaks to how strong your love is for Allah. That despite what you've gone through, you haven't said, Islam, la, la samahullah, may Allah protect us all. I've met many people who have made this statement that they don't, they don't want to associate. I mean, the fact that you want to is a sign of the strength that you want your iman to be. You want it to go in that direction. The second thing is realize that sometimes we project the way that we feel about ourselves onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I don't like myself, if I loathe myself, if I can't get over a sin I committed five, six, seven years ago, months ago, weeks ago, and I'm constantly making toba and I can't, can't, I can't even imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving me, and so I assume that because I hate myself so much, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me. So then I've met people who say that they feel embarrassed to pray because they don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would want them to pray because they're not righteous enough for prayer. For every type of worship, someone has said this, whether it's salah or hijab or walking into a masjid space. Versus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps telling us that anytime we go back to him, we are sincere in our repentance, he accepts and he forgives. And that we do good deeds to wipe out the bad. So realistically look at yourself and think about where does this feeling stem from? Some of us are really just caught up in life. We're caught up in life, we're impacted by social media, we're just caught up in the dunya, that's very human. But for others, there's some reason why. Examine what that is for you and work on healing yourself from a spiritual place with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what that looks like is A, for example, working with a Muslim therapist if you've actually gone through trauma. The second thing is creating new experiences with worship. You don't let someone who raised you or who, not raised you like a parent, but like maybe they were your Islamic school teacher, teacher, someone who when you were 13, who did something so horrific you never told anyone, they don't get to say whether or not you're gonna pray when you're 27. Don't give them that power. You have the power by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will to choose to pray today. Don't give anyone that level of, 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 of uh, importance in your head when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can help you overcome everything. So you choose it's going to be your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you build new experiences with that relationship. So let's say when you used to read Quran, it was in a very, you know, in a very particular room. Choose to read Quran on the beach. Read Quran at a cafe. Read Quran taking a hike. Re-establish new experiences with the Qur'an so that your brain makes new neuronic experiences with that, that worship. And make sure you have very consistent worship. Obviously, we have salah and we have the fara'id. But beyond that, number one, read the Qur'an every single day. I didn't know Arabic. I read it in English. The Qur'an changed my life. Changed my life in English until I learned Arabic. So every single day, take a certain amount in whatever language you can understand. If you can read Arabic too, do it. Even if you're super slow, do it every day. One verse, five verses, one page, consistently. That's the first thing. The second thing, there's a very beautiful book on Sirah. It's called Muhammad, Man and Prophet, peace be upon him. It's by Adil Salahi, A-D-I-L-S-A-L-H-I. -I. It's like over 800 pages, but it's so beautiful about the Sirah. I really recommend going to that book for the Sirah. And for a Quran translation, I recommend Mustafa Khattab. 
Dr. Mustafa Khattab has a beautiful new translation, mashallah. And the third thing is work with mentors. Find sisters, mentors, shaykhat that you can study with. Because a lot of times you're going to go to a random Islamic website to ask about a woman's question. And you're going to walk away from there going, how do I process that answer? Instead, seek mentorship with real people who have institutes. You can study with Dr. Haifa. Like, how honorable is that, mashallah? With Asada Husay, with Ansi Sosan, with, with, Dr., with, Do, with Dr. Rania, with Asada Amina. These are, people, these are women who are really here, here to support your process, inshallah. So make sure that you know that you don't have to go through this journey alone and that anytime you doubt yourself, remember, if you doubt yourself, and you wonder where are you with Allah, it's because you care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now what do you do? You reevaluate yourself. I'm here, what can I do to get to a higher place? Until you reach that place, what can I do to get higher and higher and higher? Inshallah, sincerely for the sake of Allah.